Well, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will hold bilateral meetings with his counterparts or their delegates from France, the United States of America, Sweden, and two others at the Paris Financial Pact Summit, which begins today. Now, the special advisor to the president on special duties, communication and strategy, Didi Alaki, disclosed this to journalists in Paris. He said the request for meetings with Tinubu is an apparent offshoot of his administration's economic policies implemented in the past three weeks since assuming office. The presidential spokesman said uh, the two-day summit would enable the president, who is on his first foreign trip since his inauguration, to network and attract foreign direct investments to the country. Apart from the immediate, medium and long-term positive effects of the unification policy, Alake said there could be a need for an injection of direct foreign exchange into the economy to shore up the value of the Naira while market forces stabilize. Now, he cited the lifted restrictions on spending done through domiciliary accounts, saying it will build confidence in the foreign exchange system of Nigeria, which means people abroad can begin to bring, bring in their money into the economy. Well, yesterday uh, and today, Tinubu will have to join other leaders to review and sign a new global financial pact that places vulnerable countries on the priority list for support and investment following the, devastation, uh, the devastating impact of climate change, uh, the energy crisis, and the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Now, leaders will mobilize innovative financing for countries vulnerable to climate change, foster development in low-income countries, and encourage investment in green infrastructure for the energy transition in emerging and developing economies. The president and other global leaders, multilateral institutions, financial experts and economists will also take a more holistic look at the recovery of economies from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, the rising cases of poverty to provide access to finance and investment that will leverage inclusive growth. All right. So, uh, now, let's look at, uh, well, staying with me for, for this conversation as well is Cyril Abaku, uh, VOP in-house analyst. Uh, stay, let's look at this visit now. This is the second time the president, well, first time officially, mm -hmm. right, after the, uh, right after the elections, he, I think, was it after the elections or after... Uh, well, after the elections, he went to rest. Twice. Twice to rest. <laughs> uh, and then it was also said that he was there to woo investors. investors. Mm -hmm. All right. He seems to be doing a lot in France. <laughs> yeah, he has found love there. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, commercial love. <laughs> okay. Investment love, trade love. So uh, it, it, it's good to see this happen. First of all, the, the, the Paris summit being co being co-organized by France, Barbados, and India, um, essentially to reorganize, uh, they are attempting to reorganize the global financial order, um, especially in the post-COVID-19 um, era, you know, focusing on the poorer countries of the world. Shamefully, but perhaps a blessing in these guys that Nigeria is now the world's um, Poverty capital, and so you can't have this sort of conference, conference without having Nigeria take part in it. It will be a travesty, it will be a misnomer to avoid one of the poorest, the poorest country in the world, or second poorest country in the world, not to take part in this sort of con uh, conference for poor countries. I don't know how that how that really should should make us feel, knowing that knowing the enormous resources and manpower that Nigeria has, should we be should we even be proud that? Uh, we are categorized as the poorest, we let one, me, of, let one me, of the poorest in the world. Let, let me put it in a proverb. If a blind man led a pack of people who's, who are not blind, and they are mandated to follow him and go where he goes, where do you think he will lead them? He will lead them into the gutter. He will lead them into the ocean. He will, if they were on a helicopter in the middle of the sea, he will lead them out of it, and they will fall into the river, and they will drown there. 
That was how Nigeria became poverty capital of the world. We didn't have to, we, are, we had no business being there. We have no business being there. A country with a thriving creative sector, mm. fintech sector, telecoms, has no business. A country with great potential in all the sectors that are, that are making the world tick has no business being poor. Yesterday, Bill Gates was in Lagos. Mark Zuckerberg has come. Mm -hmm. The founders of, of uh, um, Open, um, what, 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 uh, Open AI, what's the name of their, of the AI engine now? The AI, um, Open AI, anyway, the owners of Open AI. Okay. There's, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to pick the name of their AI search engine, whatever. But they, they were in Lagos about two months ago. All the leaders of fintech, of, of, of tech in the world, Silicon Valley, all the who's in the, they've, 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 you can't, you can't skip Nigeria and think that you're going to succeed in the world. You know, something, something just, just came, just came, came to mind when he mentioned open AI. Um, Nigeria, you also did say, and I mean, it's, it's, it's out there that Nigeria is the poverty um, capital of the world, but still we are, we are known to be uh, the, 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 we have the most users of the expensive iPhone in Nigeria. <laughs> it's ironical. Yeah. This is to tell you that we are, this poverty. We are rich but poor. This poverty, this poverty that, that, that is, that they're referring to is a poverty. It's like saying somebody wears paint. How did the person wear the paint? The person didn't walk into the paint shop. Somebody took a brush and maliciously painted the person with paint. That's how we came to be the poverty. It's bad leadership. President Buhari didn't know what to do when he became president. And as a result of that, we fell into recessions back to back to back to back to back. Mismanaging of government funds, wrong priorities, subsidy corruption, all sorts of things were just happening. A government that could not even prepare budget the minister of health went to the Senate and ran away said, this is the budget I sent to you people, he ran away. Now, you had the that, that even the, a particular bill that National Assembly had prepared for him, when it got to the table, somebody had changed it. The DSS raised the memo one time and said, Mr. President, you are at risk of signing documents that you are not supposed to be signing. That some people are bringing papers that are not supposed to, and you're signing them, and did you hear any, the, the president respond? How can such a leadership not put us into the political capital of the world? So that was how we So now, are we, are we blaming the last administration? No, no, no. It's not blaming. The facts are there. That it was President Buhari's mismanagement of the Nigerian state that threw us into that mess. We had no business being there. We were, when Jonathan left Nigeria, we were close to becoming, uh, um, there was a vision, 2020-2020. We were very, we had crossed the 10, the, the 10, how do I put it? You know, it was supposed to be the 20th economy by 2020. And we were very close to it. How do you, people are rich when you have, when, when the money you have is able to, has, you, you, when you are purchasing power, you don't need so much to get what you want. Mm. People are still buying rice and eating rice. You could still go to the market and, 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 and make a pot of soup and have change with you. That's what we're talking about. But what is, the purpose of property is not necessarily wealth. In economics, it's about that you, you are build, you, buying power, basically that the commodities and market are within your reach. It's okay. People, countries like Norway, the Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, and uh, Denmark, and so on, are they particularly very wealthy. But the GDP, the GDP per, per capita is, uh, is, in fact, sounds like they've gone to heaven already, like they left earth and gone to heaven. So it, this, it was President Maurice's mismanagement, misappropriation of money that led us to where we are. Now, this president has gone to France. You, did you see that yesterday the British Commissioner said that their companies would like to come to Nigeria to do business with us? One. Mm -hmm. uh, this president spokesman said, Switzerland, France, all these people, they are willing to sit and talk with us. You know why? Because I think they have seen, in my view, it appears that they have seen from what we see, that a man who understands their language is in town. Maybe it is not very clear. Let me explain again. President, I can't pick the words. He spoke, he said, he made a comment one time. Pope clearly dis disparaging um, um, entrepreneurship. He said, what do they even do? You think business will come to... Where was a socialist? 
Because he believed that when you build a, a government, a country is wealthy, that money should be in the hands of the government, not in the hands of people. That, but that's not how wealth is created. A country is wealthy when its people are wealthy. Not when there is more money in, in, in the course of government. What government should be doing is to collect taxes and provide and, and, and uh, provide basic amenities. But we had a president in Buhari who did who who who, who was a loter, who was a hater of entrepreneurship. Right. How can such a man ever raise people out of poverty? He will live in the poverty those who have a little. That was how it became perfect. Today now the discussion is around this. They, they are saying, they are saying, Nigeria, we, we believe in a potential. We want to come and do business with you. The president is in France. Hopefully, when 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 these discussions take place, okay, investors will begin to come. When two one or two of them have come. And the story is good. I was just going to ask you uh, that um, from the comments from uh, comments coming in so so far mm. from the, the UK, uh, do you think it really looks good for us investors coming back to Nigeria? Well, I say coming back because yeah, I, I mean investors mm -hmm, were here mm -hmm. at some point. And they ran away. They fled. They basically fled um, under under Buhari. They basically fled. Now the matter has to be taken in context. For me, like I said, this is Nigeria. Let's consider insecurity. Of course. Of course, that's what I'm going to. The kidnappings and all of that. This, that was, you know, I, I was already saying this is Nigeria. Mm. First of all, the president must make sure that anybody that they, they, they're coming to hold discussions with will not ask for shares in their companies, will not ask for 10% of bribes. We need to go back to the ease of doing business template that Vice President Shibajo worked out when he was acting president, where if you have a business to do with about three or four ministries, you don't have to be going from ministry to ministry. You only go to one ministry and get everything sorted there. Mm. I, you know, please, I don't... When they, when Ushibadu was stepped down from acting president, Buhari came back, we had risen on ease of doing business by some double-digit numbers. As soon as Buhari came back, we fell down again. We became worse. So we must go back to ease of doing business. If can people... In Rwanda, under four hours, you register your company. Under four hours, you just go type in the name if you want it. You can stay in one spot and do business, basically. If you Rwanda I can give you company name in four hours, in Nigeria, don't go take. They say write three, three names down. You carry by you carry, if you carry, fill the form. You are writing, writing. Even if you, if you spell it wrong, it's your business. You write, write, write. They say, come back in, in a, go, go and sleep and come back. Even the reforms that we learned, they were trying to uh, initiate online, including tax numbers. It's not, it's not working. Yet. People are complaining. So much so that the, 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 the CSC now came back and said that they, all the money they were giving were not enough. That they now want more money. Yeah. The president should even declare a holiday for people that want to open companies for six months. Say anybody who wants to open a company, just go to CSC and register for the next six months. No, no, no money to be paid. So that that way you are boosting people to, you know, Yes, they should, go, they should do all this. And then six months later, you, anybody want, now maybe for half the price. But make sure that before you can go and do that, you have, you're not just coming to, to own a company name. You're coming, you know, you, 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 you have something in your hands that you want to trade with. Fine. When these people come, there are things to look at. Obasanjo just did it in this time. He was traveling from, Obasanjo went to almost all the countries in the world. And they told him, Mr. President, investors will not come because you're traveling from place to place. They will come because your country is viable for investment. Mm. Insecurity, as you mentioned, it is important. Bribery, corruption, corruption must be dealt with. Infrastructure must be in place. They then judicial must be working. Somebody came to Nigeria to open a company, and you see, this is not just multi-billionaire companies. Companies can come to Nigeria and invest because the place is viable for investment. Mm. There are Nigerians who run, who run hospitals in, Swiss, in uh, Australia and all, and all these places, not because they are the biggest hospitals in those countries, all right? But they are, they are, they are viable enough to, to thrive. So if that, the, a Chinese man can come here and open a company where he employs only 100 people, as far as he's able to do business, it's okay for him, okay? So somebody encroaches on his land, somebody has he, he, an issue with him, he now goes to court. Do you know how many people have fled Nigeria because of court processes that, that, that never ended? He goes to court to seek redress. Two weeks after, the case is still pending. One month after, the judge is even here to call the case. How can an investor come to Nigeria and waste all his money going to court? They will lose everything. And you hope that he will stay with you. He cannot stay. So the judiciary is not just the, the last one of the common man. The so judiciary... Let's, let's also look at... Uh, yes. 
electricity. We know that currently, as it is, Nigerians are having to provide their own, you know, mm -hmm. provide mm -hmm. electricity for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think government is ready to provide enough power and that will encourage investors, knowing that investors would want to cut costs by not providing the power course, they need to course, run their of businesses? Course, of course. Are we, are we there yet? To be honest with you, we are not there. I know are we close to it? No, we are not. I think I. I 85% of Nigerian power users don't have prepared meters. If you, if you want to make this economy boom in 100 days, it's easy. Get, should I boom a matter of NDLA. Either get his type or excuse him from the NDLA for a, for a month and put him in charge of the task force to distribute free meters to Nigerians nationwide. No, this is, a, this is not. Mm -hmm. Yes, now. Yes. Three meters. Three meters, yes. Do it. But already now we've moved it to the concurrently, so governors also have the burden of, if you want to make power, whatever is a, is a business. But we must make sure that every Nigerian is metered. The federal government should do it. It should be optional. Every Nigerian should be metered. Every Nigerian home business should be metered. So that this way, the amount, the, the bleeding, not, is bleeding. The bleeding that people bleed in the name of paying uh, electricity charge, uh, charges Paris. can be curtailed, okay? And then there should be options. The uh, uh, EKJ electric, electric um, Echo Electric, um, it should not be the only companies doing this thing. We should be able to get investors to come in. And look, like, and I said it before that, your prepared meter, this is my phone, your prepared meter is actually hardware. It should not be the exclusive preserve. Of any company, oh. when you get up your prepared meter, it's your meter. If you want to use, even if you are in Lagos, if you want to use Benin Elect, any company want, you can buy from anywhere and use. It shouldn't be, uh, it, uh, you know, you know, it, uh, it 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 belongs to one company. And if you leave the house and got a prepared meter, if you are now parking and going to another location, you have to go and start all. Look, these are the things that make Nigeria, you know. So we need to work on this. Make sure that things are working. I believe that. Um, well, before investors come, you know, the president has his team of advisors with him on, on the summit, obviously. They look at figures, they look at the time. In the next six months, we, are going to, we would have covered so and so ground. When can you come and invest? So uh, this, those are the discussions that take place. I know that it won't happen overnight. But if, the, if, 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 if what the president offers is promising enough, I, I can assure you that they won't, because Nigeria has the market. Yeah. And no, no business owner uh, overlooks markets, okay? Of course. Yeah, so if, if they see that they can come out, they will, they will fly in overnight. For as long as infrastructure is in place, as long as insecurity is taking, Plato State is a very good place to invest. But with the killings that are continuing, uh, it, it, it is not a very good story, you know, uh, uh, for, for even Nigerians themselves, how much more for foreign investors. The bandits in uh, Zamfara and all those places, the gold miners, the people who are illegal men in our gold, or legal men in our gold, I don't know what to call them now. Um, insecurity in the southeast. The president must mean well for the country. He must mean well for, for the things he's doing, and he must make sure that when these, these things don't just happen in that because it is in the early days of, of early days of his administration, that they, that they happen because he has come to fix his country and make things work. If this are done, I believe that they they will more than be willing to come and do business with Nigerians. All right, Nigerians will just uh, keep their fingers uh, crossed and wait to see the results of the visit to to France, uh, how it benefits Nigerians. Of course, um, tax wa waivers are one, one, of the, one of the things that just might be on the table. And uh, the issue of insecurity, if that, is, if that is dealt with, of course, investors would want to, you know, identify with Nigeria. Um, if, I, if, I, if I just me, by law, by law, by Nigerian law, any investor who comes into Nigeria to profile a specialized solution is supposed to enjoy a tax holiday for five years. I By don't know. Yes, I don't know if it has increased now. If some sectors, I think even have maybe seven years in the mining sector, solid minerals. But I know that any investor coming to Nigeria, when 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 the telecoms boom happened, the first investors that came from South Africa were not paying taxes for 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 the first five years. They didn't pay taxes. 
Mm. They didn't for five, yes, they didn't, and then it was they said if you, if you made a phone call, one second or one minute was the same. Fifty naira back then, I remember. You know, so they did So this is the thing: if we are able to go and woo investors to come to Nigeria, can and they are willing to come and plug into niche sectors, uh, it will be a good um, it, it it will it will be a good thing for them. Uh, they will have a, lo a, a, a whole lot to to benefit from. I hope that the president is able to exploit this opportunity and get them to be willing to come to Nigeria. Uh, we are Africa giants. Anything that this is the anything that thrives in Nigeria will thrive anywhere in Africa. True that. The moment the moment they see that um, Nigerians are buying into it, have you have you noticed that Nigeria seems to be to be what's the word oppressing the rest of the continent, especially in the artistic sector, mm. uh, movies, uh, music, you know. In, in creative endeavor, Nigeria seems to be, it's as if we are the only ones doing things and all the rest are just watching us and clapping for us and being as spectators. So if, and, you know, be, the, the mere fact that you are a Nigerian, anywhere you go to, people look at you and say, ah, it's a Nigerian, okay? Because we've dominated the continent in May. The, the, daughter, the daughter of, uh, of, of, Bill, of uh, Bill, Bill Gates. Bill, yes. Yes. Bill Say, Gates saying, uh, you <laughs> if you go to Nigeria, you you meet a certain you know uh, people. That's, yeah. that's 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 that should be commendable. Bona Boya Rema. Bona Boya Rema. That is that is commendable. But you know, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to juxtapose that feeling of you know pride that Nigeria is doing well in entertainment and the reality. On the ground, that Nigeria is uh, poverty capital, capital of, the of the world. You know, I'm trying to juxtapose. No, you know, it the, worries me. Yes, yes. So I think largely, a president is is um, is an ambassador, is a spokesperson, is a marketer. Let me let me before I come to that answer, let me just say this. By this time, 2015, Buhari was saying that Nigeria was fantastically corrupt. He was telling the whole world. That was the marketing Nigeria, honestly. He would have gone to this summit to say. My predecessor took stole five billion dollars, <laughs> and you're expecting that investors will pack their bags and come to Nigeria and go and rent one of the big hotels in Abuja for one whole month. Do you think? Do you think the? Uh, do you think uh, Buhari was 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 speaking off the cuff, or he had a script prepared for for now, for, now, for, for most of the times that he spoke? So I think that that was the prologue. In the epilogue, he now said that if for everything I've said and done, you guys come after me, Nijay will defend. <laughs> he basically came to destroy this country, demarketed us, drove investors away, helped, helped Boko Haram and bandits to thrive, killed our economy, the dollar went up in record numbers, and unemployment soared. We became the poverty capital of the world. Nigerians were depressed and committing suicide. There was recession. There was massive public theft of public funds. The NNPC was changing name and went from NNPC to NNPC. Two, three thousand dollars went missing. All money, dogs were eating money. Um, monkey were eating money. Um, snakes, was snakes was eating money. Swallowing money. Sometimes in the zoo, they used to say, "No, you never go to Nigeria. Me, I don't go come." The dog would tell the goat. The goat would tell the rabbit. That was the country a president bequeathed to us. More money was stolen under Buhari than on, under any other government, maybe apart from Abacha and, uh, Abacha and uh, Babangida. More money was stolen under Buhari. When one, one action, two trillion that went away, one, just one, in one night, one, two, two, trillion, two trillion that went away, in one night. Buhari's government probably stole more than Abacha and Babangida put together. Oh, he in, was fighting in one, yes, Maybe that was corruption, yes, yes, they came fighting back. It, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so there you have your president, okay? Thank God he has gone. He should not come back. It's okay that he has gone. Tinubu wouldn't do that. I be, I'm sure Tinubu have seen, uh, has seen things. He knows, he knows what he has inherited, but he would not go to Paris and say, I'm the best man to have, to, that I'm the best man I've ever had that has happened to a Nigeria. My predecessor was a weak, incompetent, clueless leader. He wouldn't go and say that. Because he, that, he I mean, if you go there and, and said that, it means that you yourself, you don't know what to do. Having inherited a mess. What leadership does that when it comes to power, it begins to chart a new course automatically. And even if I don't like, well, whether I like what Tinbu has done so far or not is immaterial, but you can see what he has done. Taking away subsidy, unify the interest rate, the, what's it called, um, unify the dollar rate, 
da 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 da. He, he from deep, pa, 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 he's going. So when and that I, I, I believe that that's why people like you know they're even willing to say okay let's sit let's sit down with him let's let's have the discussion now the co and the core of the summit is that they are trying to rework the global financial agenda in the post COVID world with a focus on climate change and the countries that are not so well to do you know as well as um, green green energy we're talking about power before now in green yes. energy we even able to come and invest in in alternative energy if we can do that that would be very great we have the wind in the north we have the sun in the south. We have a uh, water everywhere, but we are not exploiting these things. And I've, I, I've always said that, look, we need to hybridize how we source electricity. Kainji and uh, the other, they are not the only place to get power from in this country, for goodness sake. Some years ago, some girls in Ikorodu brought their urine, put it in a generator, and powered it. It was everywhere. Two days later, they were in America, because Nigeria does not have the the capacity and competence to manage such, such talent. They've left. They left. When people started converting ga uh, their LPGs, their cooking gas, to power generators, they said, please don't, 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 don't. But how can a country, after six years of, of, of independence, has not developed a domestic power, power, power sourcing profile for itself? You have the power. You have, before Jonathan left office, there was this wind farm that they, that they built in Katan. Nobody had anything about them anymore. And that was the president's home state. What a shame. So we have the wind, we have the sun, we have the... Uh, what? Having inverters in our houses is, is not how to have alternative energy. Alternative energy is different thing entirely. <laughs> that's like a battery. Those, 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 are, those are batteries. Battery is good, but that's... We are talking about power that's sustainable, that... The way, the way we've known solar and... Uh, what, what, what was it called? Kainji and the other dams to be... That sort of power that is mainstream, okay, is feasible. People are doing it all, uh, elsewhere. Why can't we do it in Nigeria? So the president must focus on getting investors to come to Nigeria. One, he must also uh, sell us enough to make sure that you know um, they're willing to come to Nigeria and to invest in the critical sectors that will be to our own advantage. The way he has even said the ball rolling now, if if we don't begin to see deliverables in six months to one year, people will begin to call him out and say, We thought you are you are you are you are on the fast lane. Mm -hmm. It's true. So I believe you understand what was at stake and what must be done to put Nigeria on track again. I pray for him and I hope that um, um, in no time Nigerians will have cause to smile for good. All right, that's the hope. That's uh, probably the renewed hope that uh, that he you know <laughs> that that he that he's pushing forward. All right, that's, that's how far we can take the conversation. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be going into business and uh, entertainment and sports as well. I must say a very big thank you to Cyril Abaku for staying with us today. Well, he's, he's, he's part of us anyway. <laughs> so we'll be back after this break.